Hello everyone, welcome to my The Young and the Restless Homies official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Today on The Young and the Restless, Sharon pushes Summer in the right way, Phyllis and Nick praise themselves, and Victor mocks Jordan. When Nick arrives at the Newman Ranch, he is surprised to see that his father has already arrived from dropping off Nikki at rehab. Victor stayed just long enough to let her settle in and is plainly exhausted. They talk about how hard this is on her, and Nick suggests that they leave it to the specialists. He reminds his father that he needs to look after himself and that the other menace they were confronting has died and gone. Victor sits and sighs, complaining about how much he hates leaving his wife alone with strangers. He wished he could help her get over this. His son informs him that she decided to go there on her own. Victor corrects him. She was not alone. She was with Jack Abbott. That son of a bitch almost killed her, he says. Nick sits down and asks for an explanation. Victor, twisting in his chair, says that he was given information on his wife's whereabouts. When he'd arrived, the paramedics were already there. Jack and Nikki had been drinking and the abbot had taken opioids before collapsing. Nikki claims Jack orchestrated everything in order to make her realize what was going on. Nick shakes his head, reflecting about what he must have been thinking. Victor finds it all ridiculous, but his son explains that it worked. Victor believes this is yet another of Jack's failures. Nikki could not have been the one who need the paramedics. According to his son, Jack sacrificed his life to save Nikki. And as a result, she is willing to get therapy. Diane comes through the front door as Jack pours himself a cup of coffee in the Abbott manse. She's relieved he's home and wonders where he's been all night. He claims time got away from him and he should have phoned. Diane is on edge as her husband warns her that she will not like what he has to say. But she needs to hear everything before reacting. She backs away and sits down, asking him to continue. Jack explains that he saw Nikki last night. The tension had finally overpowered her, and there was nothing he could do to bring her back from the precipice she was on. He needed to do anything to save her, so he came up with an extreme alternative he had to attempt. Before Jack can explain, Kyle descends the stairs. He begins questioning them about what is happening. Jack asks if they may discuss it another time because he wants to speak with Diane right now. Kyle senses something is wrong, but Diane covers up, and their son tells that Harrison is upstairs watching a movie. Jack offers to keep an eye on him because he'll be working from home. Kyle guesses he had a hard night. Diane claims he just needs some downtime, but she will be at the workplace this afternoon. Diane asks Jack to return to what he was stating when Kyle leaves. She is becoming nervous. Her spouse claims Nikki was prepared to drink herself to death. He could only think of one way to snap her out of it, join her. When that didn't work, he planned to buy some pills. Have you lost your mind? She inquired. Jack claims he was determined to reach rock bottom with Nikki. Diane is shocked that he did this to himself and her. It doesn't help when he says he called his former dealer because his product is pure. His wife cannot believe he entrusted his life to a drug dealer. Jack claims it all paid off. Nikki is in rehab. He isn't a good enough actor to fake this, so he had to do it for real. Diane cannot understand how Jack could prioritize Nikki's sobriety over his own. Perhaps he thinks he did something great, but she believes he was selfish. Did he even contemplate what it would be like for her if he overdosed in a motel with Nikki? Jack claims it would never have come to that. And the main thing is that it worked. She recognizes a flaw in this explanation so he hesitantly discloses that he passed out, which is what startled Nikki sober. Diane loses it. Jack confesses he may have made a minor mistake. Diane is worried that he would have to fight his urges all over again. Jack guarantees that his sobriety is not jeopardized and that he has no medications left. Everything was done solely out of need. Diane, sobbing, asks again if he stopped and thought about her for a minute. He admits he was selfish and perhaps foolish. This was not something he wanted to do, and he would never have purposefully put her through it. 
That's what terrifies her the most, he didn't think. Jack never wants to lose her. Diane falls into his arms and expresses her desire never to lose him. Holding her, Jack claims he'd done everything he could to save Nikki. Is there any way she can simply trust the rest of it? Phyllis runs into Summer at the athletic club's main doors. She hugs her tightly and asks whether she slept and needs breakfast. Summer spent the night at the Abbott house and does not want to be separated from Harrison. Even being there feels strange. Her mother is quite proud of how tough and brave she has been. Summer isn't feeling brave and has been waking up all night to check on her son. They keep telling him how much they love him, but they wonder if it's enough. She thinks he needs expert assistance. Phyllis thinks it's excellent that she's looking for a therapist and hopes to find someone who understands. Sharon approaches and smirks at her. The trio sits at a table. Summer informs Sharon of all the nasty things Jordan said about Harrison. She's a sick bitch. Phyllis groans, stirring her coffee, as Sharon looks at her in surprise. She encourages her to control her anger so that Harrison is not stressed. Phyllis would not talk like this in front of him. Summer asks her mother to relax. They all want the best for the little child. Sharon is pleased to recommend a therapist for him and texts Summer the contact information. Summer rushes out as soon as she receives it to make the phone call. Sharon is surprised when Phyllis forces herself to admit Sharon is competent at offering advice. They giggle at the prospect of her becoming Phyllis confident. Everyone appears to be okay now, and Sharon believes Summer would make an excellent mother. Phyllis compliments Maria after meeting her. Sharon stands and screams that she has to leave. To your technology empire. The one I didn't get a job at, Phyllis complains. After she leaves, Summer reappears, and they discuss the doctor. Summer is confident she will succeed and promises her mother that she would always fight for her boy, just as her parents did for her. After Summer departs, Nick arrives after receiving a message from Phyllis. They instantly begin talking about their daughter. She updates him on the conversation with Sharon and admits she isn't sure Summer has really comprehended everything. Nick is certain that readjusting to normal life will be difficult, and it may result in a crash landing. He asks how she is doing. She would have been happier if she had witnessed Jordan's final breath. He urges she keep it to herself. What's transpired has reminded them both of what happened to Patty. She utilized Summer's peanut allergy to induce a coma. It was hard. Phyllis had a difficult time coming back. Nick reminds her that she is the one who got their young girl through it while sitting by her side. Their daughter has few memories of the time, and Harrison may have the same. The only thing I regret is that I wasn't able to take that Jordan psycho to hell myself, she says. That may be nasty, but it reflects her feelings. Nick says he'd cheer for her as she faced Jordan in a ring. She smiles and thanks him for always being there for her. Choking up, she tells him that they did well and that Supergirl is a supermom. Nick nods. Kyle stumbles with Sharon at Crimson Lights, and she tells him about her conversation with Summer. She reminds him that he and Summer need to take care of themselves after their tragedy. Kyle said his stomach was in knots the entire time his son was gone, and it was the worst thing he had ever experienced. She reminds out that he saved his son before he might incur further injury. He is youthful, resilient, and well-supported. Summer arrives and joins them, praising Sharon for all of her support. Summer inquires as to who is keeping an eye on Harrison after Sharon has left. He tells her that his family is keeping an eye on him, and she says the therapist she spoke with seems fine. Summer abruptly changes the subject and informs him that she does not want Claire near their son anytime soon. He informs her that she wasn't involved in the kidnapping. Summer believes she will be a reminder of what happened. Kyle believes it would be beneficial for his son to see Claire in good health. She urges that they set boundaries and evaluate his recuperation. Kyle wants to protect his child, but everything seems too severe to him. His ex-wife does not see why Claire has to be in their son's life and insists that the only thing that matters now is that he gets what he needs. Kyle informs her that they are linked and that separating Claire from their child is unrealistic. 
Summer explains that she feels panicked whenever she sees that woman. That should be enough for him to accept her requests. Victor heads down to the ranch's dungeon with a jug of vodka. He places it near the cell and sits in his chair. Soon, he becomes bored and knocks the bars to wake Jordan up. She gets up in her cot and begs him to tell her what she must do to get out of there. She's certain he doesn't want to keep trudging down to see her and wonders how much longer he intends to torture her. Victor makes it apparent that she has nothing he desires. Harrison and Claire have returned, despite her efforts. Jordan begs him to place her in a respectable prison and not abandon her in this black abyss. He swings a bottle of vodka at her while telling her to get used to it. He wants her to drown herself in drink. Drink till you croak, he tells her. Next on the young and the restless, Adam and Chelsea await word on Connor's progress. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.